What's up developers, it's Dari here and I hope you're having a great day since this will be a very important video on Tailwind since we're going to talk about a responsive design. Before we continue on, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through Patreon where you can get access to my private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out with their coding issues. So if you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. At this point in the course, you will probably be familiar with most of the stylings you can apply with Tailwind but they all work well on a big screen. What about smaller screens? How do you make your grid or flexbox suitable for smartphones or tablets? As a designer, you need to think about multiple sized screens, since there are over 5 billion mobile phone users on the planet that we live in. Something that has stuck with me when I started using Tailwind is that it is defined for mobile first. And I will repeat myself a couple times in this tutorial since it is so important and a lot of newcomers to Tailwind do get confused with the mobile design first approach. Before Tailwind became a thing, responsive designs were developed with media tags. Tailwind thought it was quite a hassle to fix that, and they were actually true because it was annoying. What they did was bringing out their own utility classes which allows you to control the set of a screen size. With the media tag, you define a breaking point where content or your design should change. But instead of designing the pixels, you can use Tailwind screen width, which will make it a lot easier. The main advantage for me personally is the fact that I always had small design issues when I use CSS to design mobile pages. With Tailwind, that issue will be completely gone. All the utility classes that we have used in this course, and even all the utility classes that we haven't used, can be applied at different breaking points in Tailwind. If we go to the Tailwind tab and search for responsive, let me backspace it, responsive design, scroll down, you can see five screen widths that are associated with a minimum media width. We got SM right here, which stands for small screens, and this will be all screens with a minimum width of 640 pixels. We got MD, which stands for medium, which has a minimum width of 768 pixels. We got LG, which is large, which has a minimum width of 1024 pixels. We got extra large, which has a minimum width of 1280 pixels. And the last one, which is extra large, so 2XL, has a minimum screen width of 1536 pixels. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger. All right. It's also very simple to use since you only need to define the breaking prefix, just like with hovers. Down here, you can see an example. Let's have a look at it. Let me zoom in. At the moment, the default width is W-16. Whenever a medium screen will be opened or your browser just has a minimum width of 768 pixels, the width will change to 32. Then on large screens, you're saying that the width should be 48. So the width of our page will grow based on the device that you're using. Right here, you can see that we're using utility classes for two different breaking points, the medium screen and the large screen. You might wonder what W-16 or a width-16 is, since we're already defining the medium screen and large screen. Like I said, the idea behind Tailwind is that you define your design for mobile first, then you use prefixes and then design your screen for other breaking points. So in our case, we're going from 16, which is our mobile phones, to 32, and then to 48. So let's make our code editor bigger again, and let's remove what we have in here. So what I want to do is to create a grid as an example, since it's pretty easy and straightforward to show. So let's create a div. In here, let's create another div with a class of bg-red-500. And let's create a paragraph with a text of item 1. Now let's duplicate it four times, so two, three, four. Change the second one to item two, and the color is blue. Third one is item three, and the background color is yellow. The fourth one is item four, with the background color of purple. Let's save it, let's go to our local host, and as you can see, we have four items right here, which is fine. In order to create a responsive design, once again, we have to think mobile first. So let's go to our parent element and let's give it a class of grid, since we're going to define a grid. Then we have to define our columns. And on mobile phones, I just want one column to be shown first and I don't want the items next to each other. 
So let's give it a class of grid dash goals dash one. If we save it, nothing changes because it is the same output. Whenever the screen width has a minimum of 640 pixels, so a SM screen, I'm going to place two grid items next to each other. So let's give it a class of grid dash goals dash two. We still have one grid item, but if we make the screen bigger, well, let's do that. And somewhere right here. All right, that was our breaking point. Right now, our SM, so small device width has been reached. Now let's make it smaller again. And let's say that whenever the medium width has been reached, give it a grid dash cools dash tree class. So three columns next to each other. And let's also define the last one. So whenever we reach large screens, let's place four grid items next to each other. So grid dash cools dash four. And let's actually test it out. Let's see if we can get three columns. Probably not. All right, this looks better. You should set your percentage or your zoom to 50. And let's go to a small device. I can't zoom in, which is terrible. We have four items right there. I might make this one smaller. Nah. Grow, 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 grow. We have our SM screen. So two grid items next to each other. Make it bigger. We have three items next to each other. And the last one is the biggest one, which is large. So we have four items next to each other. What we're doing right now is adding breakpoints inside our parent element. Let me close off my inspect element and make this smaller. What we also could do is to add it to our child elements. So let's say the div that we have right here. Let's say that whenever it reaches the SM device, hide this element. So let's add hidden to it. Save it, make our screen bigger, and let's go to the breaking point that is right here. Our first item is gone because we said that whenever it reaches the small device width, hide the element. Now this is pretty cool in my opinion, but what if we add another class to it? So let's say that on small devices, we want our text to be white. Save it. As you can see, something is going wrong right here because the text is still white, but we still added it as you could see right after the SM prefix. Whenever you want to add multiple classes for a specific screen width, you do have to define the breakpoint again. Whenever we want to add text white to small devices, we have to add a SM prefix right in front of it. If we save it, you can see that the text color has been changed to black again. If we make our screen bigger, you can see that it has been changed to white. This was it for this video where I've showed you how you could create a responsive design in Tailwind. If you do like my content and you want to see more, Leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.